Hello and welcome from Alibaba's U.S. headquarters in San Mateo, California for a very special broadcast on this November 11th, or as it's come to be known as Double Eleven. I'm Julie Huang. And I'm Candice Huang. No, Julie and I are not sisters, but we do share a common bond of having been at Alibaba for nine years during which we've seen Double Eleven evolve from a one-day marketing event, also known as Singles Day, to a global phenomenon that has become the world's largest online shopping event. But today's Double Eleven isn't just about the big sales figures we've come to associate with Singles Day. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, Double Eleven is more relevant than ever, as businesses across the globe and here in the U.S. are looking for new opportunities. So as we count down to the end of this year's Double Eleven, we'll show you just how some businesses are taking advantage of this event to grow their sales and their profiles. Plus, we'll get a rare treat and hear from Alibaba execs Joe Tsai and Michael Evans, who will join us to reveal some of the latest numbers coming out of Double Eleven and some of the latest retail innovations Alibaba has for its business partners. In fact, more than 250,000 brands are participating in this year's Double Eleven, pulling out all the stops to wow Chinese consumers. Let's take a look. When Rada started, it had all its eggs in one basket. You can't rely just on the U.S. market, so it's important to use other platforms like Tmall Global. We had an incredible launch in China. I'll never forget uh, the moment when I got the text and the message saying that we had just blown through our inventory. There's no doubt in my mind that we, we made the right decision. The growth opportunities were amazing. The pinnacle was 11-11, uh, where we saw a tenfold increase in sales. This 11-11 is the, the largest 11-11 and the youngest 11-11 yet. So there's a very strong millennial um, consumer base who are looking for new healthcare products, premium overseas healthcare products. Together with Tmall Global, we want to build a new direct relationship between California's helpful attitudes and the new dynamic nature of China's population. We've really, you know, spent our, our time this year trying to get to where the customers are. You know, if the, if the customers aren't coming to shopping malls and they aren't coming to stores, where are they? Tmall is certainly one of the places that the customers are right now, so that, that's been a big focus for us this year. Alibaba is a great partner with more than 740 million participants in the last 12 months. But I should say even more importantly, it's also based on very common value. Both Coach and Tmall are very customer-centric, and both are also deeply believing in innovation, data-centricity, as well as the future of globalization of the digital world. The pandemic has impacted heavily um, businesses around the world. And of course, Christopher has been hit as hard as other companies. And then we launched Tmall in the middle of this confinement, and it was a light of hope. So why is a shopping day on the other side of the world something worth paying attention to? To answer that question, Alibaba founder and executive vice chairman Joe Tsai is joining us now with John Kaplan, head of Alibaba's North America and Europe B2B business. Joe, as you know, I'm really excited to talk to you about Double Eleven. But first, it would be great if you could help our global audience get a sense for and understand the transformation that's happened in the Chinese economy, the, the recovery from COVID, and the, what, what you think the future looks like for the Chinese economy. Hey, John, I'm really glad to be here. Um, as you know, Double Eleven is um, one of the most important days of the company. It's really the most important shopping day in China. And your question about the Chinese economy, uh, in the short run, the Chinese uh, uh, economy has bounced back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, if you look at Q3, GDP growth, uh, was 4.9%. And uh, if you look at e-commerce, Q3 growth has been uh, about 17% year on year for the entire e-commerce sector. So that's bouncing back very nicely. You know, for folks around the world who can't actually buy anything today, folks here in the United States, for example, 
Can you help us understand why you think it's very important for us uh, to learn about the event and, and what, what the event itself can teach us about e-commerce in China? By some measures, China is already the largest retail economy in the world. I think it makes a lot of sense to be watching the largest shopping day in China in the largest consum consumption market in the world. The other reason to pay attention to Singles Day is uh, businesses in China and also businesses around the world, because of COVID, uh, will have to deal with uh, what happens when nobody comes into your stores. And the answer to that is digitization. I don't think things will really exactly return back to the normal brick and mortar world. COVID has accelerated uh, e-commerce and also accelerated the need for businesses to digitize. So Joe, one of the things that's, um, as I talk to U.S. brands and manufacturers and distributors frequently, is they look at, they're looking for practical advice. For a brand or a small business that's looking to start selling into China or who want to participate, for example, in global wholesale, what do they need to know? Uh, I would say that uh, getting into the China market is not as hard as you think uh, because of e-commerce. E-commerce is so well developed in China. It's uh, got the highest e-commerce penetration in the world, 25%. China has developed a very good infrastructure that support e-commerce. But I think the one thing to focus on first is to understand the Chinese consumer and what they're looking for and what are the ways in which uh, you can better engage them. I would say that in China today, shopping is a sport and entertainment. Uh, it's not just about going onto a website and scrolling through some product catalog. You need to engage the consumer. You need to give them a full experience, almost an immersive experience. Joe, today is an incredibly exciting day uh, uh, for global small businesses. Do you have any uh, final advice for them as we watch this exciting event unfold? Well, my advice is whether you're already doing e-commerce or you're starting to learn how to do business online, uh, even the smallest of businesses can be global because of the internet. And uh, I think we're gonna be very excited to see the final results of uh, sales uh, during Singles Day. Uh, I'm just very, very excited for all businesses and all brands uh, that are selling online and uh, doing very good business. Well, Joe, thank you. It's been great to chat with you during this incredible event. Thank you so much for spending time. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Very nice chatting with you. Thank you, Joe and John. From delivery to online promotions to payments, the strength and stability of the Alibaba infrastructure makes the scale of Double Eleven possible. For a look behind the scenes at incredible preparations, here's Alizilla reporter Cecilia Lee. How far has Alibaba's 1111 Global Shopping Festival come in the past dozen years? First year, GMV was 7.6 million US dollars. Last year, it was 38.4 billion. But it is so much more than just numbers. From online to offline, Alibaba's dynamic ecosystem is churning faster than ever. To start, Double Eleven celebrates shopping. It's an event that aims for consumer engagement and enjoyment. Each year, Alibaba develops new ways to make the shopping experience fun, from live streaming hosted by celebrities to interactive games. Like this year, users can raise a virtual cat to get coupons. These features increase brands' exposures to a wide range of consumers and enable them to introduce new products. Once the purchase is made, Alibaba's smart logistics network, Tainiao, rapidly fulfills delivery. Its state-of-the-art robotic smart warehouses powered by IoT technologies can increase efficiency by half. Last year, Tainiao processed 1.88 billion 1111 delivery orders. The network sees the number rising this year, especially from Alibaba's cross-border e-commerce platforms, Timo Global and Kala. Over 30,000 global brands have moved their products into Tainiao's bonded warehouses like this one, all across China. When a consumer places an order, the product clears customs in seconds and can often be delivered on the same day. The company is also making local deliveries faster and more efficient. 
Alibaba rolled out one-hour delivery as the next step in new retail efforts to combine online and offline shopping. Alibaba's last-mile delivery connects its own network of retailers, including Fresh Hippo, RT Mart, InTime, and other brick-and-mortar chains for quick delivery of products. 1111 isn't limited to online shopping. Alibaba helps local service providers like restaurants and bars, cafes and theaters to attract more customers through online sales and coupons. And finally, none of this would be possible without Alibaba Cloud's robust processing power and world-class technology. The system needs to handle as many as 800 million consumers and counting. The entire digital ecosystem, from Alibaba employees to merchants, are at work to deliver an enjoyable shopping experience for users everywhere. By all indications, the Alibaba ecosystem has been on overdrive again this year. And as we are just minutes away from putting 2020's Double Eleven in the history books, let's get a recap of some of the highlights this year. For that, we turn to AliZilla reporter Christine Chow at our headquarters in Hangzhou, China. Christine, it's so good to see you. Now, usually we would be there with you. So tell us, what's the vibe like there right now? Happy to see you, Julie. I'm here at CC campus. This is Alibaba's command center for Double Eleven, and you can just feel the energy. Apart from the lights and installations behind me, there are live streaming booths set up across campus. And if you go into one of the buildings, you can hear the sound of drums, of employees cheering and clapping. And that means a new sales record has been broken. Stress and anticipation is building up because this is the last leg of Double Eleven. It's the first year that the shopping festival has been extended beyond its 24-hour sales window. For consumers, this means more time to browse for deals and to dig deeper into their pockets to buy more. Analysts have seen Double Eleven as a barometer for economic health, but this year it's taken on a special importance as brands look at Double Eleven as a huge opportunity to unleash pent-up demand and recover lost ground from the pandemic. Even before Double Eleven, China's economy had been picking up momentum. We're also seeing signs that Chinese consumers are regaining confidence and willingness to spend on non-essentials like electronics or cosmetics. On the first day of the festival, it took Nike just one minute to generate 100 million yuan in GMV. That's over 15 million USD in just one minute. Less than two hours later, 100 brands had hit the same milestone, including Apple, L'Oreal, and Estee Lauder. Lancome, in just seven hours into the event, had generated more than 1 billion yuan. That's over 151 million USD. There's a strong demand for imported goods. Tmall Global saw its GMV grow by over 90% from last year on the first day of pre-sales. Imported coffee beans, for example, increased by 92% and wine by 400%. Net a porte beat its full day sales from last year's Double Eleven in just 12 minutes into the event. Dion went first in Berg in 23 minutes and Coach in 30. And we're still seeing even more incredible stats rolling in. This is just a peak of what we've seen in terms of consumer spending power this Double Eleven. The mega sale has become even more relevant this year to jumpstart brand growth after the pandemic. But don't take it from me. I spoke with the CEO of L'Oreal China earlier this week to get a brand's take on the Chinese consumer and the Double Eleven experience. Shopping festivals is a consumer-centric event. So in a way, shoppers, they uh, really wait for this moment and they want to be surprised, excited by the, by the brand. And for brands to stay excite, uh, exciting, brands need to reinvent itself every year and probably in China nearly every month. So this is why I feel always this festival is a perfect opportunity, you know, that we re-question ourselves. Are we relevant enough to the consumers? Are we explaining enough our uh, uh, innovation? You know, more than ever in this COVID period, we realize that consumers are asking themselves question, why I'm buying this and what I'm buying. So we have to be even more educational when it comes to, uh, to product, to innovation, to how to use them. The world of tomorrow is a full, homogeneous world. So the expectation, obviously, is that we are, we are also able to offer this global solution to consumers, that they can interact with our brand, if it's online, if it's offline. It's about keep the contact with them in a much homogeneous way. And that's where we will bring value. You know, we'll bring value to the market and we'll bring value to the consumption. Thank you, Rafis, for taking the time to join us. With pleasure. And wish you great success. Thank you. Double Eleven. For Alibaba, Double Eleven has always been a time for innovations. 
In the past, we've introduced online to offline shopping, the See Now Buy Now fashion show, and the gala before ourselves with fun mobile games. Given the attention and eyeballs during this time, it allows Alibaba to try out new innovations that often become the shopping norm. So we've asked some of the world's experts on e-commerce and retail to share what they're looking for this double 11. Here's what they had to say. Alibaba's 11-11 Global Shopping Festival has maintained its position as the global gold standard by never standing still and consistently innovating. But to me, one of its greatest achievements is the way 1111 is now seen as the place to launch new products across all categories, including this year, many luxury brands. Singles Day isn't purely about uh, sales and promotions and transactions. There are a web of activities that take place that allow the consumer to connect with new brands to explore and discover. So it's a fabulous opportunity for US brands and all international brands. China in the year 2020 has seen substantial acceleration of digital trends and new digital innovation. Double Eleven is approaching and the whole world is looking to China. What I'm looking for in this year's Double Eleven is for live streaming to again take center stage and to see how it is evolving. During Double Eleven, brands are often live streaming anywhere from 14 to 24 hours a day. We've even seen brands like L'Oreal experimenting with the use of virtual avatars as hosts for live streams in order to support even during off hours. This year marks the first year that luxury brands will participate in Double Eleven in earnest. And we've already seen brands like Cartier creating premium selling experiences during Double Eleven by elevating the production value of live streams while selling products worth thousands of dollars. And so we are very positive about the consumer, consumption, and just what we are going to see for this Double Eleven. Everyone that we have spoken to is participating in Double Eleven, some of them for the first time, are so excited and they've already seen, they've already learned so much and they've already seen kind of great success. We have 200 luxury brands and then 250,000 brands overall. So the impact of the shopping festival is unlike anything that we see in the entire world. As China is the most important cross-border e-commerce market in the world, brands of all sizes, small or large, have the opportunity to reach Chinese consumers when they are at the most engaged playing games or buying items or engaging with brands on 11.11. What am I looking for in this year's 11.11? As an investor, I'm looking for growth and I know I'm going to find it because there's no sector in the world today growing as fast as e-commerce in China and the rest of emerging markets. And there's no company in the world that captures that growth for investors as well as Alibaba. Julie, any ideas on what categories or products are doing really well this year? Um, I would say maybe due to COVID, perhaps um, beauty and wellness, um, workout gear, and maybe even home furnishings. Wow, you're pretty spot on. Oh, good, good. But some products that have done well might surprise you this year. Such as? Well, for one U.S. company, Providing Chinese consumers access and the power of creativity during this time is music to their ears. I had the chance to speak with the CEO of Fender Guitars, Andy Mooney. We talked about how this iconic American guitar brand thrived in China despite COVID challenges. And joining us from Hawaii, Fender Guitars CEO Andy Mooney. Thank you for being with us. I want to dive right in. Fender is having a record year despite a global pandemic. How is that possible? Well, we were very concerned uh, in mid-March when 90% of our dealers worldwide uh, who had physical stores closed and our two factories were closed. Um, but very quickly after that, we found that consumers who were locked down in various countries around the world looked to using their time beneficially to invest in themselves. And one of the things that they fortunately chose to do uh, in the case of Fender was to learn how to play guitar, many of them for the very first time. So with that, can you share with us how 2020 is looking for your business in China? How is it shaping up in terms of sales or you know, new products? Yeah, we're, we're going to have a record year as a, com as a company worldwide. We will also have a record year uh, as a company within China. 
Um, we've been growing within China in very kind of high double digit growth uh, for a number of years now. That trend will continue this year. And uh, online sales in general, and, and really Tmall in particular, in the case of China, will continue to grow as a percentage of our total business. So we're, we're, we're thrilled with the success of our business worldwide and particularly thrilled with the success of our business in China. I myself actually have been trying to um, learn guitar again, picking up my guitar or ukulele at home. Um, so I guess, you know, my last question is for all the aspiring guitar um, players out there, what is the best song to start uh, <laughs> to, um, to learn guitar? Well, the most popular song that people choose on Fender Play in our online subscription learning service is uh, Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. That's great. That's an awesome song. I absolutely love it. Great recommendation, Andy. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us. Uh, Andy Mooney is the CEO of Fender Guitars. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Nice interview, Candice. Perhaps Fender will consider live streaming next. Live streaming has become the hottest tool for brands to reach Chinese consumers and educate them about their products. And the face of those live streams is the KOLs. Candice, what is a KOL? Well, KOLs means key opinion leaders. Get to know that term because they're taking online shopping by storm. So exactly who are these KOLs, what do they do, and how can they help international brands? Let's meet one. KOLs, or Key Opinion Leaders, are the heart of modern marketing to Chinese consumers. You can catch them 24-7. They are online talking about their favorite snacks, beauty products, digital gadgets, you name it. As merchants look towards this year's Double Eleven, KOLs and live streaming will play an even more important role. Millions will look to them to guide what they put in their shopping carts. To fully appreciate this booming sector, I'm at a live streaming incubator here in Hangzhou. Meet Mauer, who has been live streaming on Taobao to bring quality overseas products to Chinese consumers. She used to be a personal shopper based in Los Angeles with a sizable fan base until she turned to live streaming two years ago. This month, she's live streaming full time to ramp up for Double Eleven and her 248,000 plus followers. Maor live streams exclusively on Taobao Live, created in 2016 by Alibaba. Taobao Live is an easy-to-use live streaming platform that offers KOLs a new and creative outlet beyond the usual text, photos, and videos. Along the way, the platform created massive new job opportunities for not only aspiring KOLs, but people across all walks of life. That includes 100,000 rural live streamers. Right now, it's easy to become a KOL through live streaming. Anyone with a smartphone and internet access can do it. And it can be done anywhere, from your living room to your own rice paddy. In fact, more than 400 CEOs and 300 celebrities are stepping in front of the camera and taking part in Double Eleven. Maurer is facing serious competition, but she's confident she will hit her sales target of 8 million RMB this year. Helping to no small degree will be her plan to introduce Chinese consumers to more celebrity brands from overseas. She will live stream through the night, featuring expanded categories and products, such as perfumes from Kim Kardashian West and Flower Beauty Cosmetics from Drew Barrymore. And one of the newest KOLs for this double eleven is a sports and business superstar. I recently caught up with five-time NBA champion Magic Johnson, who's partnering with a company that is leading one of the newest sectors of retail, CBD. Magic is a brand partner of Uncle Bud's Hemp, a product he uses himself for pain relief. He introduced Uncle Bud's products at his first live stream to China. Me live streaming right now in China. I'm loving that. And, and look who I'm hanging out with. Look who I'm hanging out with in the back, see? <laughs> so Magic, obviously you're known for basketball mm -hmm. and baseball. Congratulations, Thank by you. the way, on Lakers and Dodgers. <laughs> so what are you doing here today? 
Well, it's, it's great for me to be here with T-Mall and when I think about the Global Walk of Fame and Double Eleven and, you know, to represent Uncle Buzz and be a part of the company that's growing, that has so many incredible products. Uncle Buzz has really been doing a fantastic job in the United States. Over 15,000 retailers. This, this just exploded here. I don't get involved with companies unless I really believe in the company. I believe in the products. I believe in their vision. I believe in their mission statement. Uncle Buzz check all those boxes. <laughs> These products are amazing and they work. So today you're introducing CBD. I mean, you're going all in. <laughs> Why is it important to bring Uncle Buzz to China? Well, I think that, you know, CBD products and Uncle Buzz, it's been exploding in America. And I think that it'd be great to bring it to China because it really works. And the fact that I use, <laughs> you know, when you're my age and you still work out, I'm hurting every time after I'm finished. So I use a lot of the products myself and it's just been exploding and growing and growing and growing. So today through live streaming, you get to talk directly <laughs> to Chinese consumers. And what would you like to get across in the live stream today? I think get a chance to really meet Magic Johnson and get to know me. I get to talk to him directly myself. Just enjoy your life, that's number one. Make sure you just take care of your body and your mind. Live a good and healthy lifestyle. And it's important to keep a positive attitude every single day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's a huge honor to have you here. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna see you in China when I come, okay? Okay, yeah, definitely, Great. yeah. Definitely. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was very cool. <laughs> Can you imagine me being live from L.A., but I'm live in China? Oh, it's amazing. Alibaba, thank you. I'm the coolest dude now, right? I did something I've always wanted to do. Bucket list thing. I'm the cool dude now. Thank you for everybody for letting me be on live streaming the magic man. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. That looks like a lot of fun, Julie. Mm -hmm. Magic makes an excellent KOL. He really does. I mean, I'm from Los Angeles and um, grew up with the Lakers and Dodgers. So meeting Magic was such a thrill. But really, it was just so cool to see him in his first live stream to China to sort of, you know, quickly use the technology to engage with Chinese consumers. That was really fascinating. And um, so I have to admit, this was actually probably one of the best assignments yet. That's so awesome. Good for you, Julie. So Uncle Butts is part of a special group of U.S. small businesses who got the chance to be fast-tracked into China to participate in this year's Double Eleven. Nearly 100 businesses that do not yet have physical operations in China applied for Alibaba's first ever Double Eleven Pitch Fest. And eight of them were given the incredible opportunity to get a boost into the Chinese retail market. They worked closely with Alibaba's Timo Global team to select products for consumers, develop the right marketing strategy, and were given special spotlights on the platform. One of those companies was the family-focused personal care brand, Pipette. Without the support of Alibaba and Tmall Global and this whole pitch fest process, we would not have gotten there on our own at this early time. We've been able to have advisors help us with business development, with strategy, with category management within baby, kids, and maternity. And we have also been able to have um, supply chain consultation. You're now looking at a live shot from the Alibaba Media Center in Hangzhou, China. In just seconds, Double Eleven for 2020 will be over and we'll learn the final numbers. This year's gross merchandise volume or GMV. Now, as we wait for the countdown, I want to point out something important. We extended the shopping festival this year from a one-day event to an 11-day festival. So this year's GMV will reflect all 11 days. Now back to the countdown, which is held every year at a huge auditorium full of journalists awaiting the final numbers to cross. Normally, Candace and I would be there, but this year we're waiting along with you. 
And looks like we're starting just a few more minutes. What inching closed, sir? This is always a very exciting moment. The lights flash. Eight, seven, six, six <laughs> five, four. It's, it's exciting even if you're not there live, right? Three. And 498. There it goes. Let's see what the number is. Bear with us. And there you have it. The final GMV number for double 11 this year. It is 498.2 billion RMB. And that's 74.10 billion USD. 74.10 billion USD. Candace, that's an incredible number for a year where so many businesses have struggled. That's pretty amazing. Now, in a few moments, we'll have more numbers to share with you. So please stick around for that. That's so exciting, Julie. Um, is it me or do you look a little different? Oh, thanks for noticing. It's to tease an interview I have coming up. Um, but first, you go. All right. I can't wait to find out. In a moment, we'll hear from Alibaba Group President Michael Evans with his exclusive take on how international businesses performed this year. But first, we turn to one of the U.S. brands to see how they did. We're delighted to welcome now, live from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Max Bissell of the family-owned floor care company, Bissell. Hi, Max. Great to Hi, see you Candace. this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Hi. So last year, this time, we were at Alibaba's headquarters in Hangzhou, counting down to double 11. And this year, I know you've been monitoring the results uh, remotely from your Michigan headquarters. Uh, did you get any sleep? What was today like for you? Uh, well, last year was certainly an experience. That was my first 11-11 in China, and I was on campus, as you had mentioned. And um, not only is it the shopping event of the year, but Tmall really made it into a celebration, which was pretty cool to see. Um, celebrities were on site, like Taylor Swift. The CEO of Alibaba Group was going around wishing the brands good luck. And me and my team had a war room. So we sat together as a team. We saw in real time results coming in. And then we made optimizations throughout the night to make sure that we maximized performance. That's uh, right. That's this, so exciting. This year, admittedly, looks a little bit different. Um, so the team set up a war room type atmosphere at our office in Shanghai. I streamed in for uh, the first two hours and got to see sales coming in and wish the team good luck. And um, I'm happy to report that we had a really great year. Um, the team this year, I, I admittedly got some sleep, um, but I know the team in China worked very hard throughout the night. And I think they're looking forward uh, to getting some rest uh, today after the event. So we're eager to find out, of course, how Bissell did this double 11. Can you share any early results or highlights with us? Uh, yeah. So. The scales in China, as you know, are huge. And um, 2019 was our, really our first time participating in 11.11. So we work closely with the Tmall retail team and we put together a strategy. And uh, the goal was to quadruple our sales versus last year. And I'm happy to report that we actually over-delivered. So the team in China and us here in Michigan are, are absolutely celebrating and ecstatic. And um, I would attribute some of our success to our continual live streaming. We live streamed from our office to the Tmall flagship store. Uh, throughout the night, 16 hours straight, and it was a great way to engage with our consumers and talk about product. Wow, 16 hours. That's incredible. Congratulations on another year of success. Um, now, Bissell has been around for 140 years, but not many people know that it's actually really new to China. You've only been selling to China for three years. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why uh, it was important for Bissell to be in China? Yeah, the floor care market in China has quickly become the number two market in the world uh, by value behind the U.S. And if we look at the growth, our expectation is that China will overtake the U.S. and become the largest market over the next several years. So for us, being a multi-general family business, um, we're really focused on growth in the future. And I personally believe international is going to play an important role in that. And in, 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 um, of all international, China is the biggest opportunity. Great. So in addition to sales and a big day like today, Double Eleven, uh, what are some of the really unique values that you think Alibaba has brought to Bissell? Um, in our category, 90% of the value of products sold is sold through e-commerce. And of that, uh, Tmall is the largest. So if you want to be successful in China, you really need to be on Tmall and you need to be successful there. 
Um, the good news is there are a ton of tools for brands to use to be successful. We, we work uh, closely with the retail team and they provided some insights that have been helpful around um, cordless and that's led to product development from the Bissell side. And then um, Alibaba has a number of marketing services that brands can plug into that allow them to get their products in front of their target consumer. That's that's great. Thank you, Max, so much for joining us this morning. And congratulations on another successful Double Eleven. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Candice. Good job for Bissell. Now, we have another brand that has jumped into the Chinese consumer market through 1111. You may have noticed that my outfit is different. That's because I changed in honor of our next guest, fashion designer and icon, Diane von Frustenberg. Diane, thank Hi, you so how are much you? for joining us. I'm wearing one of my beloved DFF so dresses. And clearly, I'm not alone in my love for this dress. Our stats show that during the first period of sales, in just 23 minutes after shopping started, DVF saw its GMV exceed last year's full day double 11 sale. Why do you think DVF is resonating so well with the new generation of Chinese consumers? Well, you know, when I created this dress, I was a very young girl myself. I was in my early 20s. And I never thought that I would create this dress that would last for generation. I mean, my mother wore it, my daughter, now my granddaughter. And it's one of those things. And I don't think it has ever happened to any other dresses except the Chinese traditional chipao. So I think that's a big compliment. Now, people may not know that you're quite a digital pioneer. As a fashion brand, DVF was quick to embrace all things digital in China. You live streamed to Chinese consumers, and DVF participated in the first live stream of Shanghai Fashion Week. Why did you embrace all these technologies? Well, I think that uh, I am, you know, I love to live my time. And we, right now, we live this incredible revolution, the digital revolution. And it is fascinating. And what is really interesting is right now with COVID and everything that's happening in the world, we have two energies that pull us. On one side, everybody is closer to nature and discover more and more the beauty of nature. And on the other side, what has happened is we are pushed and we have a huge acceleration to the virtual world. So I love nature and I love the virtual world. So technology and all the things you do there is just fascinating to me. Now, DVF recently celebrated the anniversary of its flagship store on Tmall. Congratulations. Thank Through you. this online store, what have you learned about Chinese consumers? Well, first of all, as I am European, so for me, China, uh, when I read about China as a little girl, it was really the, the, the crib of civilization, you know? It's the Silk Road, it's all of the incredible thing that China gave us. So I've always been fascinated by China. As a matter of fact, right behind me here is a portrait that your very famous Beijing uh, artist Li Song Song did of me. So I'm a, I'm a great fan of China, I love them, and maybe that's why they love me too. That's great. Diane von Frustenberg, designer, leader, and a pioneer in every sense of the word. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, thank you. Julie, nice dress. That was a good move. Thank you. Well, joining us now is Alibaba Group President, Michael Evans, who has been following the results closely. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Candace. How are you? Good. Great to see you this morning. Nice so, great. So we just wrapped another double eleven, and from we just uh, what we just saw from Hangzhou, this year's GMV from November first to November eleventh, total seventy four point one billion U.S. dollars. What does this strong result tell us? Well, at, at the most fundamental level, to be able to produce that result over this eleven day period, shows you how quickly and how well the Chinese economy has recovered from the pandemic and how strong and powerful the Chinese consumer is. 
Yes, we gave more time for the consumers to shop, but we also focused on the smaller businesses and the smaller brands to give them more time to profile their new products. And I think the combination of the two has really shown itself to be exactly the right model to achieve this type, type of result. So really an extraordinary, extraordinary result. Now, most of our viewers today are tuning in from the U.S. Anything you can tell us about how U.S. businesses fare this double eleven? Well, the U.S. businesses did very well. What I can tell you so far is as of 11 p.m. China time, so with one hour to go, because the data is lagging just a little bit, U.S. businesses have contributed more than five billion U.S. dollars, which means that the U.S. is the single largest contributor of any country globally outside of China. So a fantastic result for the U.S. businesses. Now, I would, to put this in context, right, of course, the big businesses, the Estee Lauders, the Apples, the Nikes, they've done extremely well. But as you know, one of our big focuses this year was small businesses, many of which have been here today. Um, and talking to you, and whether it's Uncle Bud and the live streaming uh, from Magic Johnson, or Bissell, or Allbirds, or Pippet, or Fender, or Theo Bigelow, this was a huge focus for us this year because we wanted to show that with technology and with focus, the China market is open to everybody, not just the big guys, the little guys as well. It is indeed a great day for U.S. businesses. Um, Michael, I'm going to give you the last word. Well, this is certainly a big number. What is driving this? Look, I think it's a combination of things. Clearly, recovery from the pandemic has had a huge impact on this result. The size of this consumer base, the 800 million plus consumers on our platform, they're back purchasing it at levels pre-COVID. I think also shopping has changed. And if you look at the things that the consumers are buying today, food, luxury, autos, home, online, there's been a change primarily as a result of COVID. The third is that this is an opportunity for big brands and small businesses. So we've made a very big focus on that this year. And then finally, and I think probably the most important message is for all brands, big or small, a China strategy and a digital strategy is going to be absolutely critical to survival and success in the future. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Michael. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Pleasure. Thank you. Now, that's an important message from Michael. And if you're a business and want to learn more about how to work with Alibaba, go to alibabapowersbusinesses.com. And we will continue to post final results from Double Eleven on our corporate news website, alizilla.com, and our Twitter handle at Alibaba Group. Please follow along. Well, that concludes our first ever live virtual Double Eleven show. Thank you to everyone tuning in here on our platform, on Yahoo Finance, and on LinkedIn. We hope to see you again next year. Be well and goodbye. Goodbye.